today are Sal, Matt, and Annie. All three are seniors in high school, and they're pretty impacted by what's going on right now with COVID-19 and, and the cancellation of school for the rest of the year here in Oregon and, and many other places across the country. We know now that Oregon seniors aren't going back to school and they're experiencing a lot of loss. So we're gonna focus on them these next few uh, Facebook Live events and talk about what matters to them, how they feel about what they're missing out on and their ideas and suggestions on, on how to make 2020 a very special year. As a reminder, the information provided during this event is for educational purposes only. It's not intended nor is it implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice. So let's get going and let Sal, Matt, and Annie introduce themselves. Sal, do you want to kick us off and tell us how, you know, a little bit about who you are and, and how are you doing mentally since school's been out? Of course. Hi, Dr. Robin. Thanks for having me today. Um, my name is Sal and I'm 18 years old. Um, and honestly, mentally, it's, it's been a roller coaster the past month. Um, since school got out, um, it was rough at first. Um, but I took some time and a mentor, a mentor of mine told me that there were two ways to look at this crisis and that we could use this time to grow and use this time to work on ourselves or we could, we could do the other option. And I'm, and I'm battling the right side of it. That's great to hear. Matt, how about you? All right. Hi, I'm Matt. Uh, it's been definitely interesting. I think it's like there's nowhere, no other time um, I think I've felt like this where you know, like it's every day is an up and down, high and low, and you don't know what you're going to get. You know, your highs are kind of eh. Like the good days are when you have a really fun Zoom call and you had a nice <laughs> online meeting. And then like your worst that is when you're just thinking about all the stuff that you missed out on. And I think it's like, you know, once you're, I feel like some of the days that I felt most okay with it, you know, a couple days later, I think of something else. And then I was like, oh, dang it. Like, so I think it's just been a really, really big mix, you know, I think from like high to low. Um, but again, I had one of my one of my old friends and mentors from the Oregon Association of Student Councils told me almost as soon as it happened, it's like, give yourself some time. You know, you have the right to feel sad about things. But if your priorities don't change, if your priorities are the same as they were a month ago, you're doing something wrong. You know, there's a bigger picture that we have to look at. You know, you have the you know, if you're grateful enough to be able to stay home, if you have time to be able to, you know, try things that are new for you, go for it. Um, if you're comfortable at home, you know, be thankful for that. But think of the bigger picture that other people might not have, you know, that same, uh, that same gift. That's a smart mentor. Annie, how about you? Um, I feel kind of like, like I was talking to my friend about this. It feels like we're like in Groundhog Day where everything's kind of like the same and like over and over again and it's all blending together but I guess like it's kind of been like a good time to realize like what I'm grateful for and how I'm going to take care of the people around me and how other people are going to support me and I think like it's a really weird time but at least we're all experiencing it together like none of us are really alone in how we're feeling which is like a nice thing to think about when we are having like those bad days where we're thinking about what we're missing out on. Wow. Wow. I want to take you back to, to last week when you learned once and for all that you wouldn't be going back to school and that things wouldn't be how you've thought about them for the last 12 years. What, what were you feeling the moment that you heard you wouldn't be going back? Well, I, it was, it was really interesting because, you know, I, I think everybody saw it coming which was like the weird part where it's like, you know, California came first and then Washington. And then at that point we were like, okay, like we know what's going to happen. It was just, we didn't know when. And I think like right when it happened, things were happening so fast. Like I got emails from my teachers all in one day, you know, like the communications director reached out to people in like ASBs at Tigard and Tualatin. Like, Hey, can you like talk to this person about this? Like, can you give us a statement about how do you feel? it's like there's a lot of moving pieces with very little time to process it. Um, and still, even now, it's like really hard to believe that like, OK, this is actually happening. Um, it was just one of those things where it's like, OK, I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. So when it happened, I didn't think I was going to feel. And then the day after it happened, I woke up and I realized like, yeah, this isn't a dream. Like, I'm not going back to school. And like I had to like 
maybe one or two days to actually let it sink in actually like think about you know what that means and I'm still even now like I don't know if I've really like gone back from that it's been almost a week I agree and you know although like in the back of our minds like we all knew it was kind of coming a lot of my friends and even I like still had that hope that like hey maybe we're gonna get a couple more weeks of school maybe we're gonna get to go back see our friends like hopefully graduation is gonna happen and st hopefully we can still do it at a later time during summer but all of that coming together it was definitely a rush of emotions and it was hard to deal with at first and like I don't think you can blame any high schooler for like really taking that hit and like going through it and like taking the time to like get what they need to get done and just process everything that happened. Yeah, I definitely agree. It didn't feel real. Like there were a lot of people making jokes about it. Like, Oh, we're going to have our prom online or whatever. And then it actually like <laughs> became a reality and it was like really weird to kind of get that news and accept it. Like, my school didn't say anything to us until like a couple days later. So we all kind of just heard about it from each other in the news. Wow. So it was like, it was just really strange. And like, I went to school like that day, like just by myself, I just drove to school and like, I kind of just sat in the empty parking lot in my old parking spot. And it was like, it was really weird to think like, that was all our last days of school. And we didn't even know it. Like we, we just left school and we didn't know that that was like our last time ever going to high school again. And it was like, I don't know. I still feel like I'm kind of in denial about it. Like, I'm still like, oh, maybe we'll go back. I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Like, you know, like the last day of school, like what I spent my time doing on the last day of school. <laughs> like, did I really just spend my last day of school like doing that? Like, I like, you know, I was it was a really interesting day because we had planned. Uh, I'm part of the student union at Tiger and Walton High School. And we planned this really like uh really interesting day that we were gonna do it was called unity day it was yeah. really it was super interesting we were gonna like take out an entire instructional day and we we're just gonna focus on like student workshops student speakers all focused around like hate speech because there was a problem uh for the last few years in our district um and nothing was being done about it so we were like we're gonna take a whole day and we're gonna make it like one big conference for students it's not gonna be school it's gonna be like all student focused all student led and it was, uh, we were going to start it at Tigard, and then a month later, we we're going to do it at Tualatin. And uh, I was at Tigard High School. I, I go to Tualatin, but I was at Tigard High School when it was happening. And we got 15 minutes into it before over the speakers, they said, it's canceled. We can't do it. Like, it's canceled. Go back to class. You know, students didn't even bring their backpacks or anything. Teachers prepared for months without having that as an instructional day. In a matter of minutes, it was all canceled, and they were told to go back to class because they said no assemblies. And some of the work, some of the workshops were going to have like 500 plus students in them. And so, you know, we had like people at the school that were watching it from outside community members. And uh, all of a sudden it was just canceled. And so like I skip, I had to skip my first period, which was like one of my favorite classes. And then I go back to the school and then the whole school, it just feels like a fever dream because we spent like the last four months planning this and it wasn't happening and then it was just like all one day of kind of just messing around. Everything's lighthearted. And then that was like my last day of school. And I was like, did I really spend it like that? Like, I don't know. Yeah, we had the fake graduation as a joke. We were like, we're not going to graduate. <laughs> so let's do graduation on our last day. And now it might be real. So it was like, it was like really weird. <laughs> One one especially reoccurring theme that I've heard around my school, um, and it's interesting because Mountainside um, is a brand new school, so our class yeah. would have been the first senior class to graduate. So a lot of students were, you know, like going through the fact that like we kind of built up when we were seniors sort of for the last three years. And like finally, right as we're about to finish, hit the finish line, they were like, oh, well, like we did all this for nothing. And like, I really just want to push push the fact that like, no, like all of your work is still valid. Like you still worked really hard the past four years and you still deserve a graduation and a diploma. And even though that might not come to fruition, like you've grown so much over the past few years and that's going to stay with you and follow you into your future. That's a really, really important point. And, and it brings me to my next question. Graduation in and of itself. How are your schools handling your credits? I mean, do you know, are you going to graduate? Are there, are there still things you have to do? My school, they just said if you were, if you were passing your classes, so D or above, 
uh, by March 13, then you are good. So for seniors, this is only for seniors, but if you were passing your classes by March 13th, or if like in the meantime between March 13th and now like teachers put in grades um, and you have like everything's higher than a D, then you get a pass on your transcript and you just get your credits handed to you. Um, for everybody else, they're doing distance learning. Um, and it's kind of confusing because some teachers, senior teachers are still going to do classes, mm-hmm. but like it doesn't matter. They just kind of, they said, it's like, we want something to do and we want to keep your brains busy. So you better come to these Google Hangouts. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's how they're working it in terms of like your grad status at Tualatin. Beaverton School District also made had the same conclusion, and they also waived. Um, we needed forty out forty hours of community service to graduate, and they waived that as well as we had to have some career learning experiences that not everybody had time to finish. So they also waived those so that every student could could graduate. How about um, Sal? My yeah, my school's like already like online kind of so because we all have these iPads, so we're just like doing school like normal until until after AP testing, I think, for seniors. Will this, any of this impact your, your college acceptance, your college decisions? Um, Are colleges accepting passes as valid? I believe Oregon school, I know for that Oregon schools are waiving this past semester for students transcripts. It's like, like, they're like trying to be like helpful for students. Um, and I think California did something similar with the UC schools. But, like, in terms of, like, going to college, like, before school was canceled, I already committed to university. So we're good. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm going to UC Berkeley next year. Nice. Sal, how about you? Does this impact your college? Um, I got all of my acceptances right at the start of spring or um, actually right – a lot of them were right after um, the stay in shelter or uh, stay in order and like after school had been canceled. So I'm I, I haven't heard much about about whether like they're going to accept it or not. But since this is a global issue and a nationwide issue, I'm assuming a lot of colleges um, will waive the last semester, or at least accept passing grades, um, as well as I, I also received a couple letters from colleges saying, hey, we're dedicated to starting on time. We're going to we're going to take this on a day by day, week by week basis. Um, but like our commitment is first to our students and we're going to do everything we can to make sure that you guys can step in on the first day of school. Have you decided where you're going? Yeah, I'm going to the University of San Francisco and I'm really excited. That's super cool. And how about you? Um, I'm going to Seattle U. Um, I know like a lot of people <clears throat> like we're planning on visiting colleges during like spring break and stuff. And I've talked to a lot of people and like, they aren't really sure where they're going yet. Cause like that was gonna kind of make the decision for them. And I think like, that's like another thing that sucks too, because I know like it sucks to like lose our senior year, but it also sucks to feel like unsure about next year too. Right. Oh yeah. That's, that's so true. So when you think about your senior year and all of the milestones that are supposed to happen, and and this is just one of them, you know, what's going to happen for you for college. What are the milestones that, that you're really missing right now for you? Um, I had like a retreat that is like a big thing at my school. Like you go on junior year and then you can help out during senior year. And right when like quarantine hit, that was like when I was supposed to go on it. So that like kind of sucked. And I think like, the thing that I miss is like just like that last semester with your friends and like just going to school every day and like having that feeling of like like second semester senior year is supposed to be like the best part and like it sucks to kind of lose that part of it and that was like something that I was looking forward to um yeah I agree with that um as well as like student leadership student government has been a really big part of my life over the past few years and something i was really excited for was like sitting on the other side of the interviewing table and being able to pass on the torch to the younger grades um and as confident as i am that they're going to step up and do a great job um it is kind of sad that like we're going to miss out on getting to pass the torch onto them Oh, that's uh, it, that. Those are actually what. What about things like spring sports or are you sports 
you know, were you involved in sports? Are you missing out on those? I am not personally athletically gifted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> however, um, I was talking to a lot of my friends, um, and it is really something difficult for them if they were doing a spring sport, especially um, a fellow friend of mine, um, she and her dance team had been working literally from August last year on the same dance routine. Um, and they were supposed to, they were supposed to go to a competition next month. And I also had a friend whose cheer team had been practicing the same routine since the summer of last year. And then like they were, they qualified for nationals and they were super excited and they fundraised and everything. And then it just got canceled. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that's hitting them hard. Matt, we're talking about what are those things, those milestones you're missing out on that, that, that you're thinking about? Oh, man. Besides, like, the big ones, like, prom and graduation, I think for me, like, so I've been in, uh, I've been in student body for four years now, and it's, like, the highlight of high school. And, like, we do this special ceremony for, uh, it's called inductions, and it's where, like, we do, like, a little inducting ceremony for the new ASB officers including the eighth graders that just ran and got accepted uh, into something and they have no idea what it is. So it's kind of like their little intro into not only ASB, but like to high school. And so the seniors, they, um, they all like give speeches like to uh, the incoming like officers, but it's mostly for like the eighth graders um, giving them like, you know, advice about ASB and advice about high school. And it's like, you know, like I came in eighth grade and like, you know, hearing those speeches, like the first time you hear it, it's like, man, like I want to be in this. Like, you, like it's something you think about every year because you do it every year and watch the seniors give their speeches. And like for four years, I've always wanted, I've been waiting to give my speech and now I don't get to do that. <laughs> and so, I don't know, we're going to try to find a way to still have an inducting ceremony. I don't know when it's going to be or how we're going to do it, whether it's online or not, but you know, like, I think all the seniors feel the same way that we want to write our letters and, like, do that kind of thing. Yeah, that's got to be, that's got to be rough. I think that sounds like a worthy Zoom call, though. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I actually, and that's one of the things that, you know, when you think about these milestone events, how are you starting to think about how you pivot those to something that can still be meaningful to you? I mean, I see people... Well, my kids go to Westland High School. I have two seniors at Westland High School. And um, there's a Facebook group of parents going, oh, we should like put signs in our lawn and let's have a virtual prom. And I'm like, stop it, stop it. Because the ideas that come from us as parents um, aren't the ideas that are going to be meaningful for you. So when you think about the things and the experiences, and I think prom's a great example, how do you think about doing that? Is that something you do virtually? Is it something that maybe you do it in mid-July? What is it? Personally, I would rather like wait everything off and do it the way it was because like prom isn't the same if you're like alone in your room and everyone's like Zoom <laughs> calling each other and playing music. But like like my school like um, put out a poll yesterday to let us vote. Like, would we rather have something virtual or risk? like delaying it and possibly not having it at all if the quarantine like goes on longer than we ex expected and honestly like I'd rather just risk it and like have it in person and still kind of feel like it's a little bit normal uh, rather than do it virtually. I heard of uh, some universities like the student organizations are planning proms for incoming freshmen <laughs> so that like you know they still have their prom because everybody's going to come in in the same boat you know, seniors that missed out on it. And so, like, they're talking about doing something like that, which I love. Like, honestly, like, I would almost it, take that over, like, a senior prom with my class, like, a year from now. Like, I think, um, I don't know. I feel like sometimes it's, it's the big one, graduation, where it's, like, some people want to do it, like, you know, a year from now, how it should have been. And I'm just thinking, like, I feel like I would just be taken away from the class of 21. Like, you know, then they have two graduating classes and then they don't have their special time. And, you know, we missed out, but like, I don't want to take away from another class. I don't want to have them miss out on being the special ones. Um, we talked about doing like a drive through graduation and I'm still in love with this idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picturing like a bus loop of cars, principals taking like trash picker up or like clamps and like handing diplomas <laughs> through the window little picture there 
drive around, go down a long street, like parade style with teachers on the sides and their cars, gauntlet, clapping, like could be like 20 minutes, but like, I will take that. <laughs> I just want to wear the cap and gown. I just want to wear the cap and gown. <laughs> How about you? What are you thinking about, Sal? I mean, I completely, like, they, they couldn't have said it better. And, um, like, we two were talking about the drive through idea. Everyone was talking about throwing their hats out of the moonroof um, of their car or the the caps. And, like, I think, I think the logistics of, like, what each event doesn't really matter as much as the fact that everybody comes together and shows that like we're unified you know like I love the hashtag alone together because I really do think it describes exactly what each and every single person in this country is going through right now. That's a really great point when you talk about being alone together um, I personally I can't stand the term social distancing I think that's wrong we have to keep physical distance but we need to be socially close and I love that. I, I love what you're talking about in terms of alone together. What are some of the things that you're doing to stay together while you're alone? Um, me and my friends have been Zooming and then we make like cahoots about ourselves and then we play them all together. <laughs> or like there's like a lot of online stuff, like there's Pictionary online that you can all play together. And like it's just like about finding ways to kind of still like do stuff together without being together, which I think is like important because that's like even more fun. Like it's important to keep talking, but also it's important to do things to get like our minds off of what's going on. I agree. Um, one of the things I was most excited for this year is I'm interning for a candidate for state Senate and we each have individual um, call teams that are making calls and phone banking every day. And our team will get together on Zoom once or twice a week um, and really just shoot the breeze. You know, like we'll talk about whatever we want to talk about. Maybe we'll watch a movie on Netflix all together and chat about how crazy the how crazy that last episode was. And like, I think that a really big part of it is just the fact that like you get to you almost get to see a different side of everybody. Like whether they're in their bedroom and you see like the backsplash that they have on their wall or like <laughs> how, how <laughs> they're reacting two weeks without seeing anybody. Like it's really cool. And I feel like almost there's a different connection that I never thought I would have with a lot of different people that I've known for a long time. Um, so I'm interning on the same Senate campaign <laughs> And that's like the, I think that's the biggest thing that's like kept me going the last month. Cause like, I think like Sal, Sal can agree, but you know, we had this huge plan, like we're running a progressive campaign and it was going to be huge and we were going to knock thousands of doors and it was going to be like, oh, we were so ready to knock so many doors. And I, then like all this happened. And so like we've adapted and like, you know, like our team though has still grown. And so, like, to the point where we split up into smaller teams where Sal and I are the leaders of, like, two different teams and, you know, like, checking in on my team once a week. And then um, all the student leaders checking in with our candidate once a week has been, like, the big thing that's, like, you know, it gives you something to look forward to day by day. Because the meetings, you know, although we're working on a campaign, it's not like it's, like, serious. We take the campaign seriously, but we don't take each other seriously. And so, like, we get to have our fun with each other. We get to stay close that way. And in a way, it almost mandates us to, you know, keep checking in on each other. It's like, you know, we're still, you know, we're part of a team working towards a bigger picture, but we're also part of a team because we want to take care of each other. And so we're holding each other accountable through this whole thing. That's amazing. And and it's very true. I mean, I look at my own team. Uh, I have a team that I'm leading at my hospital, all of the behavioral health providers and, and all the things that we're doing in behavioral health. And we get together together. Uh, Every day, well, we, we actually now do it. Yeah, we do it every day, my team. And we know things about each other that uh, we've never known before. And it's remarkable to be able to realize, I was telling somebody this morning, I have like 32 managers across um, all the different departments that I manage. And it was a struggle to get all 32 together in one room. So we only ever did it four times a year. In the age of COVID, we do it every day now, every, every day. And we've made more progress um, transforming how we provide mental health care uh, in a month than I think we've made in the last five years. And it's because we're working differently. We've realized that you don't always have to be in a room to build a relationship. You can build a relationship on a Zoom call. So 
what I really want to uh, close out our time together because it does fly by so quickly is, is with your advice. You know, you've got other students out there who may not have the opportunities and the, and the perspective that you have, and they're going to get down. And I'm sure all of you have had that day. Uh, I call it where you hit a wall and you realize how much this really does suck. What advice do you have for, for people when they hit that wall and what's worked for you to help lift yourself back in the game? Anybody want to jump in? Get outside. <laughs> That's a big one. I mean, like, I mean, I'll admit I took my time to be pretty down. I took about a week or so, maybe a little more, where I didn't leave the house. I, you know, I stayed inside and, you know. Um, but I think one thing that's got me going is, like, when I'm feeling, like, extra down, like, mm -hmm. I get up and I go on my bike and I just ride. Like, I get out. I don't know where I'm going until halfway through the ride and I'm going somewhere. I'm like, okay, like, when I'm tired enough, I'll stop. But it's like, you know, I think that's, like, been the, I think the best thing for me. Because when I started looking back, like, you know, before the closure, I didn't spend much time at home, nor did I have much time to, you know, go on a bike ride or, like, stuff like that. Like, I was pretty involved in my school. And even though I was only having five classes this, you know, semester, I was still waking up early to go to school and the one that was leaving late. And I was still going to the district office and I was still going to this and that and spending, like, very little time. But I think, like, this break especially has given me more time to, like, kind of think about myself. And so one of those things is, like, I always wanted to get outside and do stuff like that. And now I have the time to do it. So I think the advice is just, like, pick something up. Like... You know, one of my friends, she used to love to read, but now she like she didn't get to do it because of school. And now she's just been reading like crazy through the break. It's like this gives you time to work on yourself, whatever that looks like for you. You know, I'm I'm a big fan of stoicism and uh, <laughs> the primary <laughs> the, the primary tenet is we can't really control we can't really control the environment around us, what happens around us around us and the situations that we're going to be in but we can control how we're going to react and basically just like matt said take the time you need like honestly like we're mourning the end of our senior year and like you are perfectly valid to do that take all the time you need to just get to a place where you've accepted what happens and then like even if none of this happened the end of senior year is a time where you're reborn so take this time to like realize what you want to re be reborn into. And like one very specific piece of advice that I would give is create a schedule, create a structure for yourself because without school and without like the original structure that we've been following forever, you can kind of lose yourself and lose track of time. So if you just give yourself like an outline for what you're going to do every day, I think that's, that's a step in the right direction. Absolutely. Annie, how about you? Yeah, I mean, you guys are, like, totally right and, like, on the nose about, like, what we should be doing, and that's, like, I totally agree with that. Like, I think, like, a really important thing is, like, it might feel like this time has been, like, taken away from you, but, like, you can take it back by, like, doing things and, like, starting projects and trying to figure out, like, what you can do to make this time yours and just, like, take care of each other, and it's okay to let someone else do something for you. And, like, it's okay to open up and feel sad about it, even if, like, there's a lot of crazy stuff happening that seems bigger than what we're dealing with. It's still valid to kind of feel really down about what you lost and, you know, yeah, just take care of each other. Well, Annie, Matt, and Sal, I want to thank you so much for joining me today on Talk To Be Well. And to everybody for listening and sending in your questions. I know we didn't get to, to many of those today, but that's okay because we're going to be back again next week with three more seniors who are going to talk about their experiences and how they're coping. If you're looking for help with processing anxiety, depression, and coping during these very difficult times, please visit, it, visit us at providence.org. We also have our website with new resources for teen mental health aimed at helping students, teachers, and parents. Please check us out at work to be well. That's work, the number two, be well.org. I'm Robin Henderson, Doc Rob, uh, with Talk to be well. Thank you again, and we'll see you next week.